one more bone in the upper limb that is scapula this bone we can also call as shoulder blade first we have to keep this bone in anatomical position then only we can discuss remaining features how we have to keep it in anatomical position see it is triangular in shape so that it will be having the superior angle inferior angle and lateral angle since it is triangular in shape it will be having the superior border medial border and the lateral border since it is flat it is having dorsal surface and ventral surface now dorsal surface should be directed backwards ventral surface should be directed forwards and medial border should be directed medially lateral border should be directed laterally and this lateral angle see this is the lateral angle lateral angle should be directed laterally since it is having glenoid cavity see this is the glenoid cavity this glenoid cavity will be articulated with the head of the humerus it articulated with the head of the humerus and forms a shoulder joint shoulder joint is present lateral to our body that's what this lateral angle should be directed laterally this is the anatomical position actually when you take any bone you no need to touch to your body and you no need to show like this keep the bone in front of you and tell that this is the anatomical position when you are keeping an anatomical position what are the factors you should be keep in mind this is a lateral angle having glenoid cavity this should be directed laterally you may keep like this and you may tell that see sir i have kept the lateral angle towards lateral but one more factor we have to keep in mind this is a dorsal surface dorsal surface having a spine that should be directed backwards not forwards so now spine is backwards glenoid cavity is laterally and superior angle superiorly inferior angle inferiorly so that this is the anatomical position of scapula whenever we are discussing any bone we have to discuss in the anatomical position only. so this is anatomical position of scapula and this is the left scapula now we will discuss what are the different features which are present in the scapula as i told you since it is triangular in shape it will be having the three angles see this is one angle this is one angle this is another angle so superior angle inferior angle and lateral angle then since it is flattened it is having two surfaces this is one surface ventral surface or costal surface this is another surface this is dorsal surface or posterior surface since it is triangular in shape it will be having the three borders see this is superior border this is medial border and this is the lateral border right then it will be having the three processes also this is the spinous process this is coracoid process and this is the acromion process actually it has broken here this is acromion process so this is coracoid process this is spinous process this is acromion process scapula having three borders three processes and three angles and two surfaces right now we'll discuss one by one first if you take the surfaces this is the costal surface or the ventral surface this costal surface or ventral surface it is resting on the or it will be in relation with the ribs actually first to seven ribs and it is concave or it is depressed since it is depressed it is forming one fossa here this fossa what we call subscapular fossa this fossa what we call subscapular fossa this subscapular fossa that means medial two third of subscapular fossa giving attachment to the subscapularis muscle here only i am telling attachment also so this subscapular fossa giving attachment to the subscapularis muscle you can see here this part this is a subscapular fossa the subscapular fossa is giving attachment to the subscapularis muscle right then if we coming to the dorsal surface this is the dorsal surface this dorsal surface has been divided into upper part and lower part by the spine so the spine dividing the dorsal surface into superior part and inferior part the superior part what we are calling supra spinous fossa inferior part what we are calling infra spinous fossa so this is supra spinous fossa and this is the infra spinous fossa supra spinous fossa giving origin to the supra spinatus infra spinous fossa giving origin to the infra spinatus and this subscapular fossa giving origin to the subscapularis that is about the dorsal surface next borders see here this is a medial border and this is the lateral border medial border having this surface that means dorsal surface of the medial border and ventral surface of the medial border this is the ventral surface so 
this is the ventral aspect of the medial border this is the dorsal aspect of the medial border so dorsal aspect of the medial border attachments are different ventral aspect of the medial border attachments are different so if we coming to the dorsal aspect from superior angle to the root of the spine see this is the root of the spine this is the root of the spine from the superior angle to the root of the spine this part is giving insertion to the levator scapulae then opposite to the root of the spine medial border opposite to the root of the spine this area giving insertion to the rhomboidus minor then from root to inferior angle from here to here this part is giving insertion to the rhomboidus major that means posterior surface or dorsal surface of medial border of scapula giving attachment to the levator scapulae rhomboidus minor rhomboidus major then if you coming to the ventral surface medial border this ventral surface medial border giving attachment to the or insertion to the serratus anterior muscle this is the first digitation then second and third digitation and remaining five digitations that means ventral aspect of medial border of scapula giving attachment to the serratus anterior totally only one muscle but serratus anterior muscle arises by eight digitations and insertion also by eight digitations only that's what first digitation will be inserting to area which is extending from the superior angle to the root that means root level this area then second and third digitation from the root of the spine to the inferior angle remaining five digitations inserting to the inferior angle inferior angle of ventral aspect of medial border of scapula this is about the attachments of ventral aspect of the medial border of scapula now we will discuss about the attachments of lateral border this lateral border is very thickest rod like structure it is looking like a rod and it is acting as a lever we will see the attachments of it the upper part of the lateral border having one tubercle here this tubercle this tubercle what we are calling infraglenoid tubercle this is what we call infraglenoid tubercle because it is present below the glenoid cavity that's what this tubercle what we call infraglenoid tubercle from the infraglenoid tubercle muscle taking origin that muscle is long head of triceps from the infraglenoid tubercle long head of triceps muscle taking origin then coming to remaining part of the lateral border this lateral border upper two third giving origin to teres minor by two slips see here from here to here one slip from here to here one more slip this is one slip and here is the another slip in between these two slips circumflex scapular vessels will be passing in between these two slips then lower one third this area is giving origin to the teres major that means lower one third and also angle giving attachment to the or giving origin to the teres major so that is about the lateral border now we will see superior border see this is the superior border the superior border having one notch towards the root of coracoid process this notch what we call suprascapular notch see here this notch what we call suprascapular notch this suprascapular notch will be bridged by one ligament like this, this ligament what we call suprascapular ligament or we can also call as transverse ligament because of this ridge this notch become foramen here notch is there this notch will be bridged by one ligament that ligament what we are calling transverse ligament or suprascapular ligament because of this ligament this notch become foramen or notch become canal over the canal there will be passages of blood vessels those blood vessels what we are calling suprascapular vessels then through the foramen passages of nerve so blood vessels are passing above the ligament nerve is passing below the ligament you can remember in such a way that nerve remember as navi artery remember as army army will be passing over the bridge navi will be passing below the bridge that means in the water you can remember in that way now we will discuss about what are the different angles which are present here see this is the superior angle it will be covered by trapezius this is the inferior angle it will be covered by latissimus dorsi and it will give attachment to the latissimus dorsi also that is about the superior angle and inferior angle then coming to the lateral angle this is a lateral angle this lateral angle having the one concave depression this concave depression what we are calling glenoid cavity so this is a glenoid cavity or we can also call as glenoid fossa this glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa articulated with the head of the humerus 
and forms the shoulder joint. Actually, head of the humerus is larger than the glenoid cavity. Along the margins of the glenoid cavity, there will be attachment of glenoid labrum. Above the glenoid cavity, here you can see one tubercle. This tubercle, what we are calling supraglenoid tubercle. This tubercle, what we call supraglenoid tubercle. This supraglenoid tubercle gives attachment to the long head of biceps. Below one more tubercle is there that we have already discussed. Infraglenoid tubercle. Infraglenoid tubercle giving attachment to the long head of triceps. Supraglenoid tubercle giving attachment to the long head of biceps. This is about the lateral angle. Then we will discuss about the what are the different processes which are present here. See, this is the spinous process. Up to here, this is spinous process. From here to here, this is spinous process and this is acromion process and this is the coracoid process. This is coracoid process, this is acromion process, this is spinous process. Now if you coming to the spinous process, this is the spinous process. Spinous process is triangular in shape. See here, this is triangular in shape. If it is triangular in shape, it will be having the three borders. This is one border, this is one border, this is another border. Anterior border attaching to the dorsal surface of the scapula. Here is the lateral border and this is the posterior border. This posterior border we can also call as crest. This crest having the upper lip and the lower lip. So this upper lip what we are calling upper lip of crest of spine of scapula. This lower lip what we are calling lower lip of crest of spine of scapula. This upper lip is giving attachment to the trapezius muscle and this lower lip is giving attachment to the origin of deltoid muscle. So upper lip of crest of spine of scapula trapezius, lower lip of crest of spine of scapula deltoid muscle. Right? Then this is the superior surface of the spine of scapula. This superior surface of spine of scapula giving attachment to the muscle which is attaching here. What is that muscle? Supraspinatus muscle. Then here inferior surface of spine of scapula giving attachment to the muscle which is attaching here. What is this? Infraspinatus. Then coming to the lateral border. See here. Just lateral to this lateral border of spine of scapula. Here one groove is there. This groove or notch what we are calling spinoglenoid notch. This notch what we are calling spinoglenoid notch. Through this spinoglenoid notch suprascapular vessels and nerves will be passing. There will be one ligament which will be connecting the spine to the glenoid cavity like this. Through this blood vessels and nerves will be passing. That's it about the spine. Then spine in the lateral part continues as acromion process. See this is the acromion process. This acromion process having superior surface, inferior surface, lateral border, medial border. If you take medial border at the anterior part of the medial border, you can see one articular facet here. This is articular facet. This articular facet articulated with the acromial end of clavicle and forms the acromioclavicular joint. Then if you take the lateral border, this is a lateral border. This lateral border giving attachment to the lateral fibers of deltoid. We know that lower lip of crest of spine of scapula giving origin to the posterior fibers of deltoid. Then anterior border of lateral one third of clavicle giving attachment to the anterior fibers of deltoid. So here this lateral border giving origin to the deltoid muscle. This is the superior surface. This is the inferior surface. This acromion process will give attachment to one more ligament. That ligament is connecting the acromion process to the coracoid process like this. This ligament what we are calling coracoacromial ligament. This coracoacromial ligament along with these two processes will form the coracoacromial arch. This coracoacromial arch acting as secondary socket for the shoulder joint. So that is about the acromial process. Then below the acromion process there will be one bursa, that bursa what we call subacromial bursa. Then coming to this process, this is beak like projection. This beak like projection what we are calling coracoid process. This is coracoid process. If it is coracoid process, it is having tip. This tip is projected forwards and laterally. This is the tip. And it is having the superior surface, inferior surface, medial border and lateral border. Right? So, tip is giving attachment to the short head of biceps and coracobrachialis muscle. Medial border giving attachment to the pectoralis minor. Then this superior surface and this border is giving attachment to the coracoacromial ligament. And this superior aspect or superior surface of coracoid process giving attachment to the one ligament that is connecting the clavicle 
and the coracoid process. This ligament, what we are calling coracoclavicular ligament. Actually, this coracoclavicular ligament having two parts, trapezoid part and conoid part. This is the ligament which is connecting the coracoid process to the clavicle. This is what we are calling coracoclavicular ligament. Right? So, these are the different attachments. So, these are the different features and different attachments of scapula. So, we can see here also. See, this is the infraspinatus muscle, here supraspinatus muscle, here teres minor, here teres major, here latissimus dorsi. Then here levator scapulae, rhombidus minor, rhombidus major. Then if you turn this total area is giving attachment to the serratus anterior, here is subscapularis. Then lateral to the suprascapular notch, here there will be origin of inferior belly of homohyoid muscle. Here, lateral to this suprascapular notch, here is the attachment of inferior belly of homohyoid. Right? So, here is inferior belly of homohyoid, then here pectoralis minor, this is the tip giving origin to the chart head of biceps and coracobrachialis muscle. This is a supraglenoid tubercle giving attachment to the long head of biceps, infraglenoid tubercle giving origin to the long head of triceps. Now we will see the ossification of scapula. Scapula ossifies from one primary center and seven secondary centers. If you take primary center, primary centers appears near the glenoid cavity. That means here. It is appearing near the glenoid cavity during eighth week of development or during eighth week of intrauterine life. Then first secondary center appears in the middle of the coracoid process. It appears in the middle of the coracoid process. That means here. It appears here, middle of the coracoid process. It appears at the first year and fuses at 15th year. That is the coracoid center. Next one is subcoracoid center. Here is the subcoracoid center. This is the subcoracoid center. It appears around 10th year and fuses around 16 to 18 years. Then two centers for the acromion process. For this acromion process, there will be two centers. Two secondary centers will be formed. And one for the for lower two third of margins of the glenoid cavity, there will be one center. That means one secondary center. Two centers for the acromion process and one center for the lower two third of the margins of the glenoid cavity will be formed or will be appeared at the puberty and fused at 25 years of age. Actually, acromion process having two secondary centers. If these two secondary centers are failed to fuse, it may be interpreted as fracture of acromion process. But if you wanted to confirm whether it is fracture or not, you have to take the x-ray of opposite side also. So that we come to conclusion that whether it is fracture or, or non-fusion of two secondary centers of acromion process. Till now, we have discussed five secondary centers. Then, remaining two centers are there, no? Those are one for the medial border and another for the inferior angle. These secondary centers appears at puberty and fuses at 25 years of age. Then, if you come into the applied aspects, ventral aspect of medial border of scapula is giving insertion to the serratus anterior. It keeps the scapula over the thoracic cage. Whenever the serratus anterior is paralyzed, medial border will be projected backwards. So, this condition what we call winging of scapula. Then, sometimes, because of the abnormal development of the medial border of the scapula, this scapula looking like boat. That's what this scapula we can also call as scaphoid scapula. Scaphoid scapula or we can also call as boat shaped scapula because of the abnormal development of medial border. So that it will become more concave. Right? So it will be appearing as boat. That's what this scapula we can also call as scaphoid scapula. That's it about the scapula.